Alright guys, my name is the Meta Goblin, and today I'm going to be giving you my personal top 3 class recommendations for Classic WoW. So these classes, you know, I've had the most experience with, I've played them on vanilla servers, and I've just personally found that these classes have the best playstyle available to anyone who wants to play the game. I just find them the most fun, and that's why I'm going to just make them my personal recommendations. Again, that this video is totally subjective to my opinion. You might watch this and think, well, I've, I find these classes really, really boring, which is fair enough, whatever. But this is just my personal recommendations. So obviously, um, I am playing a rogue in Vanilla, but I'm not going to recommend the rogue, because, like I've said, I've not really played the rogue that much, and you know I've already talked about it in a recent video. And just before I jump in, guys, please do give me a quick follow on Twitch, as um, I'm trying to stream there as much as I can right now. Probably will be streaming over there most nights before the launch of Classic WoW. And obviously when the game launches, I'm going to be doing a really long 36-hour live stream, so be sure to stay tuned for that. So my first class recommendation is the Hunter. So obviously, you probably know by now, this is the class I have the most ex you know extensive experience with. So, the reason why I, pl I find Hunter to be really fun is because it feels like its own individual RPG game. I've said this a number of times on the channel, but there are just so many class features and mechanics to keep you busy and interested in the class. You know, learning everything about pet mechanics, which by the way, you should probably check out my videos for that. You know, learning how to... basically learning everything there is to know about each individual pet and the advantages that each pet type brings to the table. Learning how to optimise your pet training. And, you know, you can also have the, have the opportunity to just go out there and collect really awesome, cool and rare looking pets. Basically, what I'm trying to say is there's just so much to learn about pets. Like, you could make your own game out of the pet mechanics in World of Warcraft. Because they're just so extensive and interesting and it requires a lot of strategy for you to fully understand and master. Pets obviously make soloing and leveling extremely easy and... What's interesting is that the more you play with your pet, the more you kind of feel this bond between you and this like computer generated animal on a on a screen. Which sounds stupid, but you know, it's just a thing. Like you will genuinely build a bond with the pet that you're playing with. Other advantages of Hunter that I like is the main point is its maneuverability, right? You can run inside dungeons faster than the other class because of the aspect of a cheater. Which is a really, really big convenience perk because in vanilla when you're getting, especially if you're new to the game and you're learning the game, you, you are going to wipe a lot. It happens in vanilla. It's just something that you know, have to get used to. But being a hunter, being able to run back to your, you know, to where you, your progress was in the dungeon is just, um, it's just a really good convenience perk because you know, running around really, really slow in a dungeon, it kind of gets tedious after a while, and you tab out to go on Facebook, and you end up pulling more mobs and you know, that kind of thing. But as a hunter, you just get to run around a lot faster. You're also extremely good at kiting. You have basically infinite snare abilities when you combine wind clip and con concussive shot. It's really easy to kite um, NPC enemies, but also PvP enemies. You've got Feign Death, which is the most useful threat dropping ability ever. You can use it for a number of cool tricks as well, like swapping gear, going into Shadow Meld, using an extra potion. In fact, it, the Hunter is a class where there are so many nifty tricks that if you start playing Hunter today and you play it for like a number of, you know, like a month or so, you're probably going to be in a position to make your own totally original nifty Hunter tricks because, you know, I've yeah, you know, I've been playing Hunter this past month, making videos for you guys, and I've learnt my the Eye and the Beast macro that I made for you guys, and I featured on my channel the Shadow Mode macro. You know, there are two things that I learned in the past month. There's so many nifty tricks that you can learn and, you know, just, you know, adapt into your playstyle. The end game rotation for Hunter is a little bit more interesting than most other classes. You know, perfect timing of abilities so you don't clip your auto shot things like that. Pe I mean, people moan that Hunter is the worst DPS in the game, but if you're skilled enough, you won't have trouble out DPSing other classes. It's true that Hunter scale badly when they get gear, but in, in the early phases of the game, they actually one of the top DPS. There's a number of situations where Hunter can actually easily take over in a DPS, purely because of the fact they can drop threats so easily as well. So that is something to bear in mind, but at the end of the day, you shouldn't really care about numbers. You should care. What's more important in vanilla is surviving, right? Because most people do die in like in raid fights, so it's less. Obviously, numbers are really important, but it is also just important. Well, what's more important is just playing well. The second class recommendation I have for you is the warrior. I find warrior to be the hardest, most difficult class to play, but it's also the most rewarding, right? Especially if you decide to play a tank, because you will just basically never struggle to find a group. What will happen is you group up with people. People will add you to their friend list without telling you. And then later on when you're playing the game, 
you're going to have people whispering you just like, you know, want to come Blackrock Depths. That's going to happen a lot. If you're playing a DPS class, that never happens. It just never happens. You never get people just whispering you like, do you want to come to this group? Very rarely happens. But when you're playing a tank, people are going to do that. People who you've never even spoken to or met, for, met before in your life are going to do that. They're going to individually look on the, the who mechanic in the game, filter it to warriors, and they're going to whisper every single, like, a few warriors if they want to come to a group, right? So that's just something to bear in mind. You're going to get into groups very, very easily, and that can be, you know, very satisfying because, you know, that, that feeling that you get when you whisper a group and you know exactly, you know, precisely, 100% that you're going to get into that group is a very satisfying feeling. And a lot of people, they're just going to have this unspoken respect for you for playing the most difficult spec and role in the game. You probably just generally get a lot less, like, trouble and drama when you're playing a warrior, because people just don't want to irritate you in their group, because you might leave. However, people don't want to irritate the warrior, because if you irritate the warrior and the warrior leaves, then you might have to wait ages to get another warrior. So, yeah, you basically get a lot less trouble as a warrior, so that's another thing to bear in mind. So that's pro I basically, you know, spent one and a half minutes talking about the social aspect of playing a warrior, which, you know, is quite interesting. Let's actually talk about the spec itself, though. Playing as protection is very difficult. It requires a lot of concentration and strategy, which is a, you know, it's a good thing. I've always liked the tanking playstyle, in all honesty, because it's all focused on optimizing your survivability rather than your DPS. Which, in all honesty, I find to be a lot more satisfying. You know, when you get your shield block up and you're mitigating loads and loads of damage of your shield block, it just feels good. And it feels good to optimize your gear and stuff like that and your stats just to get more and more defensive. The rotation is like never the same all the way through one fight, you know, one raid fight as a protection warrior. There are a number of different playstyles you have to learn, you know, maximizing your threat, maximizing your survivability. And you have to learn those rotations, master them and adapt them to your current situation, the current particular raid mechanics in the fight. And if you want to play Fury instead, the rotation is also quite fun to play, unlike, you know, other classes where you just spam the same spell over and over. As Fury, you will, you know, have a number of useful abilities at your disposal, which you can adapt into your rotation. And then a lot of people also argue that Fury Warrior is basically the biggest DPS in the game, so that is obviously another perk, if you, you know, care about being at the top of DPS meter. So my third class recommendation is the Shaman. Shaman is by far my favourite healer because it's a class that doesn't just brainlessly heal over and over, okay? This is because using totems as a Shaman is a separate important playstyle that has to be understood and mastered. You're not just going to be spam healing and, you know, the occasional dispel now and again or the occasional buff like most other healers. You would have to use your totems, like, intelligently depending on what buffs your grip currently needs and adaptively to your current situation. Overall, it's just an extremely fun playstyle, just learning how to use your totems intelligently. I've always just found, you know, playing a class that buffs other classes to be a very satisfying playstyle. You imagine you're standing there improving everyone else's gameplay, which is why, you know, I've always liked playing support classes in, uh, in MOBA games and stuff like that. But as time has gone by, this playstyle has faded away from World of Warcraft. It f almost feels like um, a separate role to the Holy Trinity. You know, you have your tank, DPS, and healers, but then you have your separate support class. And the Shaman kind of is its separate support support class. In games like Lord of the Rings, you have exclusive classes classes like the Bard, Lawmaster, and Captain, which focus on either buffing the group or debuffing the boss. For instance, the Captain, it's a class very much like a warrior, you basically, you know, you play, the playstyle is very much like a warrior. You go into combat, you use melee abilities and generate rage and spend those rage points on, like, abilities. But those abilities that you spend your rage on, they don't just do DPS. They don't just personally improve your gameplay. They apply buffs to the entire group. So it's a spec focused on buffing the group while doing your own personal DPS. And obviously, classes like that don't really exist in World of Warcraft, but Shaman is the closest thing to that playstyle. Anyway, other than what I've just talked about, Shaman is, you know, one of those great hybrid classes. So when it comes to solo content, you can or PvP content, you can mix up all of the spells of different specs to become an extremely, really powerful mix and match of every single spec and you know every single role in the game. I mean, there's even tanking, like tanking tank-like abilities in you know for the Shaman class, which a lot of people have kind of theorycrafted a little bit as well. So. 
Yeah, that's not just one of the perks of playing hybrid class. You can mix and match different playstyles and play different playstyles at once. But anyway, that's pretty much where I'm going to interview you guys. I think I've ranted on long enough. But these are my personal free class recommendations. If I was going to play, you know, if I wasn't going to play a rogue, I would probably play either a warrior or a shaman. And the only reason why I wouldn't play hunter is because I just played it so much. But, um,. I think my top, I don't know what my top out of these three would be, it's very difficult, I'd honestly probably say the Shaman, I just love playing Shaman so much, just that, the totem playstyle, it's just very, really, really fun and satisfying to play. I think that, that would honestly be my, I think it's between Shaman and Warrior, just because of the social benefits of playing a Warrior, it's really difficult, but those, those are basically my two top classes. Obviously I am playing Rogue in Vanilla, but like I have no experience with Rogue. Maybe I'll end up playing Rogue and not enjoying it at all and have to re-roll a Warrior Shaman, who knows. But anyway, my name is Metagoblin, to my next video, ciao.